Right, welcome back. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is we are. I hope you're having a good one. Uh, tonight uh, we're going to tie a, a very simple foam beetle pattern. Uh, it's great, just a little generic number and a good way to start learning a few things when you're playing with foam. Um, Again, real super simple. Uh, we've got the foam, uh, black foam along the top. And it's sort of like a wing case. Little indicator spot so you can see where it is. Some uh, barred legs here. And underneath we've got some of the black uh, Simplify uh, Sparkle Dubbing. Uh, yeah, we'll crack into it, show you how it's done. Sorry if I forget, the hook I'm using tonight is a Kamasan B405. Uh, tying it on a size 12, uh, you can go a bit smaller or bigger, just take a look at what's in your uh, local area and go with that, but 12 is easier to film as well, so we'll crack in. Alright, as uh, so with everything, we'll start off with our little uh, thread base here. Uh, tonight I'm using the Semperfly Nano Silk in black, uh, 30 denier, or 18 naught, depending how you like to measure it. And you just want to build up that uh, thread base. We're going to be putting the foam on first, and just because it's something to grip onto. Let's go back until you start getting onto that bend of the hook. And we'll just get rid of our tag end. Uh, the next part is optional. I like to do it. Uh, but before I put the foam on, I'll put a little bit of uh, super glue heads. I mean, I find it just holds it there a bit better, but. I'll go into that with the next step. Alrighty, foam. Uh, so I'll take a very thin strip. This is a 2mm craft foam. I think I just got it online from AliExpress or Spotlight or something like that. It's nothing super fancy, but it does the job. And I'll take just a little enough. It's sort of just about the same gap length, or same width or height as the gap in the hook there between the shank and the hook. And then I'll just make a little uh, pointy end on there which makes it just a little bit easier uh, to tie in. I see you absolutely have to do that and excuse the creaky chair but I'm going to put just a little 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 tiniest drop of uh, uh, glue on there. And I just find it helps hold it there and holds it steady. And we'll just take the pointy end and you'll get that uh, caught in. Just loosely wrap, wrap your way uh, back and slowly start uh, tightening up on it. Generally I try not to go uh, full tilt on it straight off as the uh, thread can cut through, but you just want to get it just down into that uh, bend of the hook. You don't have to go too far. And yeah, just get it all secured in. If you really wanted to, you could put another little layer of glue in here to hold it on properly, but that looks pretty good to me right there. We'll move on to the dubbing. Alright, on to the dubbing. Now I'm just going to be using that uh, black Semperfly Sparkle Dub. Now you can mix it up though, uh, it doesn't have to just be, be that. I found a uh, good old trusty peacock curl works really well. Or uh, Semperfly Straggle String is quite cool. Uh, get a little bit of sparkle and shine. Whereas uh, the Kiwis and Aussie friends will know as well, you get the old uh, blowfly and stuff on the river, which can have a sort of iridescent uh, blues and greens to them. And uh, the old uh, hollow tinsel can do the trick. This one is uh, black sparkles, but you could just build the thread body up there and then cover it up and that stuff and look pretty cool. But I'm doing the, uh, the black sparkle dubbing tonight and I'll just use a little bit of the simplified GSP wax on here. I just find it helps get it just to stick a little bit and uh, hold on to it a bit better. And we're just going to slowly, 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 slowly build up this body. Uh, there'll be a few uh, bits and pieces sticking out by the end but we'll just trim them off. Uh, this is probably the most uh, labour intensive uh, section of this fly, but like I said before, you just take your time, you want to build up that sort of tapered body so that it's slimmer uh, down at its 
uh, end or behind end and fatter as it gets in towards the middle and we're just going to keep going up I right, just keep going up until I reach probably just shy of a nine and a half and behind and stuff like this like to come a little bit un unraveled but just keep going and just keep twisting it and get there if you're not happy with the shape of it you can march back and just add a little bit more on and if you wanted you could put some sort of ribbing under there but I haven't found it necessary yet I'm just going to keep building this up as we go forward and uh, this tubbing is quite a, a long fibre when you take it out of the package but if I'm using it for nymphs I'll just take out a, a good pinch of it and then uh, trim it down to what I need it to be a little bit ahead of myself there and I can get a little bit wayward sometimes but it's not the end of the world there we go. Yeah, that's about as close as we need to be. Right, from here, like I said, we're just going to like a split, just trim it down. And just get rid of all those scraggly uh, bits and pieces you don't need. Oh, this fire so easy, you can just... I don't know. Find I start tying them and bit of music on and before you know it you got half a dozen done and you've had a, a good time listening to some good music. Alright, there we go. Well, it doesn't look too shabby. Not perfect, but one and on to the next. Alright, next up is our uh, foam and one do. You just roll that over forward. So you left a bit of space there right behind the eye. And that's where we're going to start making the uh, head shape on it. And you just tie it in, and the gap you've left between the eye and where you've ended that uh, dubbing. I'll just get rid of this little, little fella. And then, generally for proportions, I find as soon as I can feel the scissors uh, banging up against the eye, it's a good spot to cut. And I'll just. Oops. Now I'll show you what I do here, I'll tip it over once I've done it, but you just want to trim away those corners and it's going to give it a sort of C kind of rounded look on the head. Give it that sort of beetle shaped head. Hopefully you can uh, see that there. Next up we'll put the legs on. Alright, next up we have our legs. I'm using a large, uh, they're silly legs, uh, they've got some barring on them. Uh, these ones are green and black, uh, you can get them in all sorts of colours, whites, blacks. Uh, again with the barring, get red and blacks, and I don't know, all sorts. I uh, like these green and black ones though for this, it's uh, been doing the job nicely. And you just want to get that first one tied in on the side there. Give about three wraps and it's going to uh, be stuck in there enough to uh, do the job. Uh, the second one which will be on the opposite side to you because um, as you wrap uh, that thread it's going to want to pull it around so I find if I lay it across the top and then it just comes down with it and hugs itself in there uh, once you've got them in you just need a couple wraps one for good luck and as you can see we've got the barring I use that as a marker for where uh, I want to I trim them off. I like to keep the legs on these nice and short. Um, and generally I'll, I'll go about two and a bit uh, from what you've tied it in for the uh, length of them. And just doing that gives you a something to measure it with. The other reason why I quite like those barrings. I've gone just a little bit shorter on that one, so I just even them out. I like to have them even. There we go, that's better. 
Um, I don't know. I don't feel anything you can do to stop them from spinning is helpful. I feel like I can even fly. There's a good place to start. And we'll go on to our last set next, which is going to be putting the little uh, indicator strip on there. Alright, indicator. Now this is just a little orange bit of foam, or you could use white or pink, green, whatever floats your boat. And I tie this, or cut this out, just a little bit, or slightly thinner uh, than the uh, black bit of foam. Uh, it really is as simple as just getting it in the middle of it, right above where you've tied that, those legs in, and just get it in there. Down and lift this up, and then I just try to trim it close to the body. Once that's sitting on the water, you'll be able to see it nicely. And last but not least, the gold whip finish. These really are a simple pattern, and I haven't had to use them too often here in Wellington, but they've been a good one when it's uh, the old Power Adams or and in the height of summer the old stimulator hasn't worked either. But you can just tie that off and sometimes I'll do uh, no, usually I'll do too, I don't usually worry too much about yeah you know, gluing the, the finish off. But you can. There we go, presto. Alright there you have it. One very simple foam yeah, uh, beetle. Nice generic pattern, a good way to start learning a few things with playing with foam. Um, yeah, I like them. Again, don't forget you can uh, play around with that underbody, like peacock looks uh, pretty choice as well. Uh, all that straggle string or hollow tinsel, but uh, wherever you are, I hope you enjoy tying them. I hope they work well for you. And, uh, if you're of the inclination to post on social media, by all means tag me in it, South of North Fly Fishing. I'd, I'd love to see what you're doing and how they turn out for you, but either way, happy tying. I hope you have fun. See you next time. Cheers.